in Genova on the 16th of March 1961, Professor Andrea Mele has a degree in chemistry and a PhD in chemical sciences that he obtained in 1989. After the PhD, he spent two years as a postdoc at the Glycobiology Institute at the Oxford University in the UK, doing research on selective NMR techniques for oligosaccharides and glycoproteins. He started his academic career at the Department of Chemistry of Politecnico di Milano as lecturer, then later on as associate professor, and starting from 2011 as full professor of chemistry. He is in charge of the Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy Laboratories of the department. Today, Professor Andrea Mele will tell us about the findings of his latest research study. Could you introduce your latest work, its scope and results, and the research group behind it? Yes, with pleasure. Uh, some years ago, we started a research line on uh, oligosaccharides and polysaccharides uh, with the property of absorbing small molecules from the environment. Well, this uh, absorption uh, process is quite important, at least for two good reasons. First, and let's imagine we, we can use this, uh, this material to uh, absorb undesired chemicals from the environment, for instance, uh, pollutants or uh, those molecules responsible of uh, bad smells from chemical plants, industrial plants or uh, civil plants. Uh, the second good reason is that we may use this material the other way around. So, we can imagine to use this as a, uh, literally as a sponge, able to absorb a precious molecule, a molecule with uh, some added value, like a drug, and to release this in a controlled way and exactly where it should be released, so uh, at the target or in situ. So basically what we, will, what we are interested in is uh, in characterizing such materials from the structural point of view uh, that may be used as a molecular container. But this is the case of your latest work? Uh, yes. In uh, our latest work, we used um, a particular type of uh, cross-linked polymers called cyclodextrin nanosponges to encapsulate uh, a very popular drug, uh, which is uh, ibuprofen. Ibuprofen is one of the most known uh, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. Cyclodextrin is a quite uh, um, general name for a class of compounds uh, they are derivatives of glucose. Glucose is a monosaccharide. It may react with itself to form uh, disaccharides, trisaccharides, and in general, oligosaccharides. Uh, a particular type of these oligosaccharides are formed when the glucose uh, units uh, form a macro ring. The overall shape of these macro rings is a uh, sort of a donut. Uh, more formally, we can talk about a torus or a truncated cone. Uh, the main feature is the presence of a cavity, this uh, macro ring. The inner surface of the cavity is hydrophobic. The uh, surface, the external surface of the cyclodextrin is hydrophilic. So uh, cyclodextrin show uh, quite a good water solubility, but inside the, the internal surface is hydrophobic. The water soluble molecule can be allocated inside the cavity and this gives, uh, gives rise to a, uh, com uh, to a complex, which is called an inclusion complex, where the cyclodextrin acts as a host and the other molecule acts as a guest. But there is no chemical bond establishment between the two. So this is a, uh, what we call a supramolecular complex. Uh, this uh, behavior was, uh, um, was exp exploited and it is still used to enhance the solubility of uh, uh, some drugs uh, which are not very water soluble. Cyclodexin can be used also as a monomer for uh, uh, obtaining polymers and these kind of polymers are the cyclodexin nanosponges. How can abuprofen enter the uh, yes, to achieve the entrapment of uh, ibuprofen, we used, uh, we exploited the properties of one of these uh, class of material, the cyclodestin nanosponges. So it's the uh, capability of uh, absorbing water uh, with a phenomenon which is known as a swelling. Uh, strictly speaking, we start with uh, uh, the dry polymer, which is basically a white powder and we contact this uh, powder with a solution containing uh, ibuprofen. After a while, um, the polymer is able to absorb water and it turns from a white powder into a transparent, highly viscous and homogeneous hydrogel. 
Ibuprofen is dissolved in the solvent, so it's able to penetrate the polymeric network. And uh, what we get at the end is a hydrogel containing the uh, ibuprofen. The next step is to get rid of the water. And to do this, we can lyophilize the, the hydrogel. And eventually, we uh, obtain a, a dry polymer, which is loaded with the ibuprofen. Very interesting. Um, what's next? So there are important issues to be addressed now. The first one is uh, to understand the molecular states of the drug inside the, the scaffold. And the second one is to uh, investigate if the, there are any interaction between the polymer and the drug, and uh, if these interactions are able to change the structure of the, the drug and consequently the activity. One unexpected finding of this research was uh, uh, exactly on the state of ibuprofen inside the, inside the polymer. The uh, nano sponge we used has a cross-linker with acid-base properties. And we must keep in mind that also ibuprofen is, uh, from the chemical point of view, an acid. So it may exist as uh, an dissociated acid or as a salt. What we have found is that uh, uh, during the lyophilization process, uh, the ionization state of ibuprofen changed dramatically. We started with the salt and we ended up with the undissociated acid. So one of the uh, take-home message of this experiment is that uh, it's, it's a sort of caveat, it's a sort of warning for those who prepare a system for drug delivery. So in other words, the entrapment of the drug in the polymeric uh, scaffold uh, should be monitored by physical methods exactly as we did because this uh, is a quite critical uh, step in the preparation of the system. From the pharmacological point of view, both the salt and the indissociated form of ibuprofen are active, but they are absorbed by blood plasma at different velocity. So we can think, at least in line of principle, that uh, we can play to modulate and to regulate the release and the concentration of the ibuprofen. At the end of the polymerization reaction, we obtain a material which is basically a three-dimensional polymer characterized by a high porosity. Uh, there are two different types of cavities inside these materials. Uh, the cavities of the cyclodestin themselves, uh, which are hydrophobic, and the voids uh, generated by the polymerization process. So uh, the uh, molecules we want to encapsulate in this uh, material uh, have a, a different mechanism for establishing uh, interaction with the polymer itself. And so we have uh, different ways to uh, capture these molecules inside the polymer. What brought you and your research group to focus in particular on this research field and on these kind of materials? Uh, the synthesis of uh, this material is extremely simple. Uh, it is one synthetic step and one, synthet and one uh, purification step. So it is possible to uh, synthesize a large number of different uh, nanosponges with different cross-linkers, with different properties. The second point is that uh, uh, there are many applications for nanosponges. So they can absorb uh, pollutants, uh, organic pollutants, inorganic pollutants like metal ions. They can absorb drugs uh, or proteins or even gases. On the other side, we almost know nothing about the structure of this polymer. So we thought that this was a sort of tabula rasa, and we decided to explore uh, the structural properties of these materials with a, in a systematic way. In your research, you have used a combination of different kinds of techniques. What is the added value given by this kind of approach? The point is that uh, the system I have described are very complex. So you, you can imagine a big building, which is the polymer, and inside the building there are a lot of things. So uh, it is not possible to have a single technique that is able to provide you with all the information you need for all the components of this uh, complex system. So the polymer, uh, the, the dynamic of the polymer, the dynamic of water inside, the, the hydrogel, for instance, the structure of the gas molecules, so the dynamics of the gas molecules, and so on. So it's a must using 
uh, different techniques. And uh, you collect all the information and you use the information like these pieces for a mosaic. At the end, uh, you have to compose the image. My group is basically an NMR group. NMR means Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Spectroscopy. And my closest collaborators are my research assistant, Frank Castiglione, my PhD student, Monica Ferro, and my technical assistant, Walter Panzeri. I have in this uh, quite established collaboration with uh, the group of Francesco Trotta at the University of Torino. He is the pioneer in uh, synthesis of cyclodextrin nanosponges. Part of the synthesis was also carried out in my department at the Politecnico di Milano, Department of Chemistry, by my colleague Carlo Punta. And uh, a lot of work for the structural characterization was done by uh, Barbara Rossi at the Electra Synchrotron facilities, uh, especially for the UV uh, Raman uh, spectroscopy. And finally, I want to acknowledge also a quite strong collaboration with the group of uh, Valentina Benuti at the University of, uh, uh, of Messina as far as the uh, vibrational spectroscopy are concerned. How would you describe your research experience at Selikeri? For my group in particular, we used uh, the uh, Slovenian facilities for high field NMR spectroscopy and solid state NMR spectroscopy. We obtained three days of uh, NMR time at Ljubljana. The environment was pretty good. The instrumentation was at the state of the art and the local contact was particularly competent and uh, helpful. What the, my collaborator found uh, at, the, at the CERIC Center was uh, a good environment for science and they really had an improvement in their uh, scientific background. I also had the, the chance to uh, use uh, two other uh, facilities, uh, the Hungarian one for neutron scattering and the Italian uh, Electra uh, facilities for, for light. And uh, I, I have to confirm the extremely positive impression and there is a take-home message for younger people. If you write a proposal, a multidisciplinary proposal, this force you to understand beyond your uh, specialty, beyond your uh, personal background. So this is a good exercise, and using multidisciplinary facilities is uh, uh, definitely uh, a, a winning strategy, especially for younger people. Mm -hmm.